whole area has a lot of special memories for me. I was about five years old when I caught my first ever trout on this stream on a red salmon egg. I've seen some bears. In fact, I saw a bear on this hillside right behind me when I was about seven. So now I'm 42, I'm back on the stream. I've fished it a lot of times since I caught that first trout. But these days I fish it almost exclusively with fly tackle. The North Yuba is a great stream for fly fishermen, whether you're a beginner or a guy who's been doing it for years. The stream is full of wild trout, primarily browns and rainbows. There's more browns than rainbows, but more rainbows are caught. This is just a beautiful German brown trout, pretty typical of what you catch in a North Yuba. The stream is full of fish this size. This is just an awesome brown. Let's get that fly out of there and get him back in the water. really wonderful things about the creek is with all these native fish you'd think it was a hassle to get in here you had to hike a long way and that's not the case I'm right here today in the middle of a campground right aside of highway 49 there's not another person in sight it's late June wonderful facilities great access and great fishing what more could you ask for so what we're using here today pretty simple fishing it's a small creek small fish and they're really aggressive just using a stimulator dry fly pattern and a nine foot P line leader that tapers down to about 6x. It's the middle of the day, there's a few caddis flies coming off, but uh, it really doesn't matter. You can fish a grasshopper, you can fish an ant, a lot of different patterns will work. These fish are aggressive, they're hungry, they're ready to feed, and we've already got about six strikes this morning, so we're having a great time out here on the North Fork of Cuba. I thought I could pull a few fish out of this hole, but that first brown trout we caught here is a little bigger than average for this stream, so he might have already pushed all the other smaller trout out or maybe just fighting him, scared the other fish. I got one more rise, so it looks like we're gonna move on upstream here to the next little hole. It's a great thing about fishing this pocket water. You fish out this spot, you move upstream a few yards, you got brand new water to fish, and it's full of trout. I'm always amazed by the number of high Sierra streams that are just like the North Yuba. They're full of wild trout, they're totally accessible, they're not private, they offer outstanding fishing, and um, you know, they're just not utilized by that many people, especially if you come during the week, you're likely gonna have the stream pretty much to yourself, and it's almost like a, a deep wilderness experience right aside of the highway. It's a beautiful little rainbow trout, pretty typical of what you're going to find in the North Yuba. Just beautifully marked, totally wild fish, and uh, he couldn't lay off that stimulator. It's getting pretty feisty here, so we better get him back in the water. Pop that little hook out of there. And there he goes. Little baby. Now that's a monster. So we've been working our way upstream here. I don't think we've covered a hundred yards of the stream bed yet, but we've already had about a dozen rises and caught six or seven fish. This is a really classic spot right here. We've got deep water, we've got a little waterfall and some shade. So when you're out on a small creek like this, these are the kind of little honey holes you're looking for. I guarantee you, when I throw this stimulator in there, we're gonna get hit. We were looking for one cast, one fish, and there he goes. Let's try for another one. It's full of fish in there, we just need a sardine can to put them in. Fly fishing is probably the most effective method for fishing small brushy creeks like this. Spin tackle will certainly work, but you're going to be spending a lot of time rigging bait or getting your, your spinners untangled. With a fly rod, you can move from pocket to pocket, cast, catch fish, release fish, cast, catch another fish, and just stay on the move. If you fish this stream hard for an entire day, you could easily catch 100 fish. It wouldn't be that big, but you'd have continuous action all day long, and almost all of it would come on the dry fly. 
A lot of folks are intimidated when it comes to catching trout on flies, but it really doesn't have to be intimidating. In fact, it's pretty simple, especially on small streams like this. Right here in front of me, you can see I don't have a whole bunch of flies. I've only got two small boxes of flies. These are my nymphs, my subsurface flies, which I very seldom use, but carry anyway, just in case I need them. This is my workhorse box. These are primarily dry flies. These are the flies that are on the surface of the water. The trout come up and grab them. It's just a great thrill. And uh, really no need most of the time not to use the dries here because the trout are so aggressive, they're hungry, and uh, you're gonna be able to get them right on the surface, and that's very exciting. that often intimidates new fly fishermen or people that are interested in getting into fly fishing is the whole aspect of casting. And it does take some talent and a little bit of practice to cast when you're making long casts, but one of the great things about fishing a small stream like this is the casts tend to be very short. You're working with probably not more than 20, 25 feet of line at the most. It makes it easy to manage and very simple to catch fish and be effective on the water. Presenting flies on a small stream like this is really pretty simple. The only thing you really have to remember is you don't want to use a fly that's too big and you want the fly floating on the surface without any drag. You want it drifting along naturally. And that means you want to be fishing upstream, casting up current and letting the fly drift back towards your position. That way you're not going to get any drag in the fly. It's going to look very natural and that's what the fish are looking for. Tahoe National Forest offers some great services and some great campgrounds. Um, this campground we're at right now is, is right on the shores of the North Yuba. There's several of them up and down the stream. It's primitive, but it gives you everything you need for set up a comfortable camp. There's restrooms, and right down the road at Bassett Station, you can get all the supplies you need. But it's a great, quiet place to camp. It feels like you're out in the wilderness, but in reality, you're right near the road. There's no other people around. I think I'm going to bring my wife up here in a couple weeks. She's been dying to go camping and this looks like the ideal setting to me. on the upper stream above Bassett Station, fishing dry flies for wild rainbows and browns. We caught several fish. We stopped off at Bassett's for lunch, and now we're down here on the lower river. As you can see, the stream's a lot bigger down here. It's a lot wider. We're gonna spend the afternoon and evening down here, and we're hoping to catch a whole bunch of fish. <laughs> 